I've always been attracted to psychology. I started out my career um, in psychology before I became a social worker, but I, I felt as a social worker, he didn't really have the time to do the things that I wanted to do with, with clients, service users, um, to think about some of the difficulties that they were experiencing. Um, social work was very much kind of crisis driven, so psychology tended to lend itself to um, wanting to work in that kind of way. Um, so I've always been interested in, in psychology and had an opportunity through some private ventures that I was able to undertake to allow me then to go off and do the counselling psychology doctorate, which I enjoyed. The reason why I chose counselling psychology specifically um, was after looking at the different divisions, I did feel that counselling psychology and the principles embedded within counselling psychology best fit how I viewed psycho psychopathy and how I've viewed uh, kind of people's struggles and people's problems. Um, so I, I, I liked the counter psychology philosophy and ethos. Um, and also I was able to do it locally because I live locally here in Teesside. My role as a counselling psychologist um, is quite varied. Um, whilst I, I do work in the NHS, I also work privately as well. But in relation to the NHS, I work in the, in the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service and I am the acting lead for psychology across Teesside for all psychologists working in CAMS. Um, and my role is both clinical and uh, kind of leadership role as well. So clinical in the sense that I continue to, to have a caseload and manage a caseload. Um, however, at, at the, it, given the role that I've now got, I also have a senior leadership role um, in terms of driving forward kind of national agendas like the transformation agenda and working with senior managers and di directors in trying to deliver psychological therapies across Teesside. So it's quite varied, but also um, delivering consultation for staff and supervision and teaching to staff and various other things. That's the, the role is quite vast in the NHS. Um, but as a counselling psychologist, it isn't just about working in the NHS. You can do lots of things as a counselling psychologist. Uh, certainly privately, I do kind of medical legal, post adoption kind of work, uh, family proceedings kind of work as well, and private therapy as well. So it's it's really interesting that you can actually take your job into various different settings. So you're not just exclusively working in the NHS. I think as a counselling psychologist, um, and for all psychologists, I think leadership is one of the key roles in the profession. Um, because you take on a senior position in any organisation as a psychologist, um, you naturally vicariously learn the leadership skills required for you to do that job. Um, but also there's additional training that you have to do as well. Um, that's run by the NHS. There's, uh, there's other training that you can do outside of the NHS, but le leadership is a core kind of role within the NHS, so they put on quite a lot of training for people to do. So I've kind of done some of that training as well. Um, certainly in the trust that I work with, um, it's, it's embedded within what we call the lean principles, the lean model, and there's lots of training around kind of that particular model. Um, but it's one of the key roles of a psychologist. And it's also trying to encourage other people within the team to be leaders as well. It's not just the more senior you are, the more you need to be the leader. Actually, everyone has that responsibility and that role within the team um, in order to meet the needs of the patients we work with. The main thing I enjoy working with within CAMS is working with children. Uh, uh, that's kind of um, kind of a common sense answer in some ways. However, I think the higher up you go in psychology, working through kind of the bands, is sometimes the danger is you work further away from children and families. Um, 
but actually if you can try to keep hold of that that's basically it's a it is a privilege to work with families and work with children it's um i've worked in adult mental health services and when i've worked in in adult mental health some of the patients that i often worked with had involvement with cams and i think being there at the early stages of somebody's life you can have much more well i feel you can have a, a significant contribution to that to, to affect and change earlier on in the, in the process i think one of the things that counseling psychologists have to offer um, in the nhs is clinical leadership um, thinking particularly in relation to um, the dissemination of psychological knowledge and also um, delivery of psychological therapies. Lots of people are now trained or being trained in psychological therapies as part of the IACT transformation agenda. And I think as a psychologist, it's important that we oversee almost the clinical governance of that and to ensure that people deliver psych psychological therapies effectively um, and in the true spirit of the modality that's been, been kind of delivered. Also, the biggest contribution is the collection of data around the therapies being delivered in terms of the routine outcome measures. Um, one of the things that the clinical commissioning groups require is evidence that what we do is effective and there, therefore is a requirement to collect the data to prove that, which is something brought about by the IACT, but actually it's also um, transferring to other modalities that are not part of IACT. Um, program things like um, kind of therapy and play therapy and, and other kind of modality specific therapies that are around um, kind of attachment certainly children's attachment uh, with, which is prominent within the CAM service things like dyadic developmental psychotherapy whilst it's not an eye act there is still a need to prove its effectiveness and whilst it's also listed in nice guidelines the delivery of something like that needs to be governed by psychology. By psychology. I was a, a trainee at um, TCI University and I've been here at the university for quite a number of years doing other things. And as a result of that, I um, kind of joined the Counseling Psychology Programme in 2007. And I feel that the course equipped me to do a number of things within my current position, but also not just in the NHS, but privately as well. The biggest thing I think I learned in the course was the, the value of the therapeutic relationship. And I know that's kind of key um, in counseling psychology, but actually I think regardless of um, what approaches you use with, with patients, clients, I, th I actually think the therapeutic relationship is the key. Um, to successful change, but also not just with patients and service users, but also with uh, kind of the working relationships that we, we need to have. So that's the, the main kind of thing I've, I've kind of learned from the course, as well as the modality specific um, kind of approach to psychodynamic CBT. That allowed me to actually implement psychological principles, but notwithstanding the need to ensure that therapeutic therapeutic relationship um, but it's also helped me to do research and audit and various other things that's essential in, in, a, in a post but also how to deliver therapy I mean the, the requirement of the 450 hours is essential but then you also have the personal therapy side of things which which is really helpful um, and it's something I probably wouldn't have done had I not done the course but I'm glad I did um, and also doing, having the opportunity to do a doctoral thesis and working academic, academically to that level is one of the key things that's required if you are to succeed and progress through the NHS. Um, being able to publish um, business plans and being able to write quite extensive comprehensive reports, I think without the, the, the course I would never have been able to do that. To immerse himself in with, preferably in the NHS initially, um, because I think there are lots of opportunities 
um, in developing skills in leadership because of the amount of courses and training that they put on. Otherwise, I think that there's a risk that you have to pay for that yourself. Um, but just in terms of practically, it would be helpful. Um, in terms of personality characteristics, I think it's, it's also being generous with your time um, and being open with, with people um, and offering kind of advice and support and consultations and supervision with various team members and, and have an open door policy around that. And I think that's how you can develop your skills in leadership beyond formal training. Whilst you are a qualified psychologist, I think it's, it's about being a real person as well. And um, I almost I kind of call it being a psychologist in disguise. People want to know you, not you talking to theories. And I think once you're able to do that, that's when the working relationships develop and that's when trust develops and that's when leadership then can be much more able to be disseminated. If people don't have that relationship with you, it's a bit like the therapeutic relationship. If they don't have that, then your ability to be a leader become, can become compromised. Just do it because it's the best career you'll ever have. Um, if you're interested in people, interested in working across a variety of different settings, this is the ideal profession. Um, it'll, I often think the training itself is one of the hardest things, but one of the best things you'll ever do. And it, it brings about lots of challenges and it'll tap into some insecurities that you might have about your ability, both either academically or professionally or clinically. But it's trying to ride through that and contain that because at the other end, there is a, a fantastic career to be had, but you've got to just kind of get your head down and do it. Um, but I have no regrets about training to be a counselling psychologist. Um, and I think the opportunities are vast and beyond just working in the NHS.